Rapa Nui, or Easter Island as it is commonly known, is home to the enigmatic Muai stone monoliths that have stood watch over the island landscape for hundreds if not thousands of years. Their existence is a marvel of human ingenuity and their meaning a source of mystery. In this video we are going to explore the mysterious Muai statues on Rapa Nui and their symbolic meaning. The word Muai can be translated to mean sacred or holy in Maori, Hawaiian and Samoan. There are close to 1000 statues, up to 86 tons in weight and 10 meters in height, though average is around half of that. 95% of the Muais were carved from the volcano Rano Raraku. A few statues were made of basalt. The largest statue, named El Gigante, located near the Rano Raraku quarry. In 1955, the famous explorer Tull Heyerdahl set out on an expedition to Rapa Nui together with five archaeologists from Norway, Chile and United States. It was long believed that the statues at the island's Rano Raraku quarry only consisted of heads. Heyerdahl and his research team excavated the statues and found under the heads that colossal torsos existed. Another excavation began in 2013, named the Easter Island Statue Project. This project was led by Joanne Van Tilburg. The excavations also found that the buried Moai statues had symbols on their backs. I have not found very much written information about these symbols, so I will present to you my observations and what I think they mean. The backs can vary in style and detail. On the lowest part of the back on many of the Moai, there is a symbol that looks like a capital letter M, with a line coming down from the center of the M. Above this symbol are three arches with a circle at the top of the three arches. Other researchers have suggested that these are symbolic of Rapa Nui loincloths. This is a picture of a Rapa Nui man named Pakumiu Maure in ancient hami or loincloth. He poses for a photograph during the USS Mohican's visit to Easter Island in 1886. There are some resemblance between the symbols on the back of the Mue and the loincloth that is called Hami. However, symbols can have several levels of meaning and I think that on a superficial level these symbols could represent a loincloth, but I do think there is a possibility they have a deeper symbolic meaning. The M symbol with the line coming down the middle is exactly similar to a symbol that exists in Polynesian tattoo art. In tattoo art, this is a symbol for the turned bird. On page 33 in a book called The Polynesian Tattoo Handbook, Volume 2, this symbol is described as a fa'agugu, which is translated to mean turned bird. The book says that the meaning of this symbol is safe return. The, the book further says that, quote, Arctic terns cross the oceans from pole to pole and s return safely without ever losing their path. Furthermore, the turn never passes the night at sea. If navigators follow the turn, they were sure they would spend the night on land." End quote. The word fa'agugu can be divided in two words. Fa'a means the way of or in the manner of and gugu which means turn. So fa'agugu can be translated to mean the way of the turn. On page 95, in a book called Rapping, Pacific Islander Youth and Native Justice, the author writes, quote, According to Lisha Sablon, the Arctic tern or gogo -go is a symbol of protection and guidance. The bird was often seen during long ocean voyages, and voyagers would often follow the birds to land. Each symbol shows variants commonly used in the Samoan Malu. The bottom right symbols are variants commonly seen in male tattoos, textiles and other surface prints." End quote. So as we can read from the book, the tern is associated with sea voyages and navigation. The arctic tern flies from pole to pole, so the symbol could therefore be symbolic of a north-south direction or opposite. The arches above the supposed turn symbol on the statues is also a symbol used in Polynesian tattoo art. A semicircle, as you can see in this image, symbolizes the sky. The two figures in the arch symbolizes the ancestors who guarded the descendants. The path of the sun during the day forms an arch just like the arch on the statue. The three parallel arches could possibly symbolize the path of the sun on winter solstice, equinox and summer solstice, as shown in this example. 
The top arch is the sun's path during the day on summer solstice. The middle arch is the path during the day on spring and autumn equinox and the lowest arch is the path during the day on the winter solstice. Noon in solar time occurs when the sun is at its highest point in the sky for the day and it is either due south or due north of the observer depending on the latitude. The cardinal directions are probably the most important directions in geography and navigation. These directions help us orient ourselves wherever we are. By observing the noon sun, voyagers at sea would know the direction of north. Noon can easily be determined by using a shadow stick. The shadow casted from the stick is always at its shortest at noon when the sun is at its highest. Another reason I believe the Muay statues are related to solar navigation are these statues on Ahu Tongariki. The statues on the Ahu Tongariki seems to mark the winter and summer solstices. The whole monument is perfectly aligned with the Muay facing the sunset on summer solstice on December 21st. The back of the statues are directly against the sunrise on winter solstice sunrise on June 21st. The faces on the Muay statues have very distinct features as seen in this Muay named Hua Hakananaya. The head is slightly tilted back with the chin jutting out as if scanning a distant horizon. He has a prominent eyebrow ridge shadowing the empty sockets of his eyes. The nose is long and straight, ending in large oval nostrils. The thin lips are set into a downward curve, giving the face a stern, uncompromising expression. A faint vertical line in low relief runs from the center of the mouth to the chin. It looks to me like the Muay statues are pointing towards something with their lips. Since I'm married to a woman from Panama, I'm very familiar with that facial expression of pointing with the lips. The first time I saw that expression, I did not know what it meant, since I'm used to pointing with the index finger. However, many cultures around the world use the lips to point with. According to researchers at the University of Chicago and UC San Diego, Lip pointing is widespread and well documented in Southeast Asia, Australia, and the Caribbean, Africa, and South America. Lip pointing is also known as mouth pointing or snouting. It is a movement that is commonly used to indicate a physical direction or signal someone to look at something. What here? Right over here, they said. Now, right here. These features associated with lip pointing is very characteristic of the Muay statues. If the Muay statues are pointing towards something on the horizon or in the sky, then what is it? In order to find out, you would have to go to Rapa Nui and first find the exact direction of each individual Muay. The ears on the Muay statues are very long and are placed much higher on the head compared to where an ear is located on a person. There used to be a long-eared tribe on Rapa Nui called Hanawepe, but not even this tribe would have the ear attached that high upon the side of the head, as you can see on this Muay. I therefore believe that the ears could have a symbolic meaning. The long ears on this statue are very similar in shape to a solar analemma. What is an analemma, you might ask? An analemma is a plot or graph in the shape of the figure 8 that shows the position of the sun in the sky at a given time of day, at one specific location, measured throughout the year. Perhaps the entire Muay is supposed to symbolize a solar analemma. The top of the analemma marks the summer solstice and the bottom of the analemma marks the winter solstice. When looking at the bottom of the Muay, they all have two hands with very long fingers pointing to the center of the bottom. If the Muay is a symbol of a solar analemma, the fingers would point to the winter solstice. The long fingers on the statues look similar to what you find in Polynesian tattoo art. In this image, you can see the names of these lines. I have translated the meaning of these lines from Maori and Samoan. Asu fa'aifu can be translated to mean four days down. Asu laititi tafage can be translated to mean little sunny day. Asu laititi can be translated to mean small day and tafage can be translated to mean morning. Asu 
Fa'aifu can mean declining days.